I come from a Peranakan family, so the flavours, the, the smell, the, the taste, even the whole eating and the experience of cooking and learning is, is all from grandma and, and mum. And this is the thing that has always been a part of me uh, ever since I was young and still a very big part of me today. My name is Malcolm and I'm the chef and co-owner here at uh, Kenanut Restaurant in Singapore. So Kenanut is a Puranakan restaurant serving very simple food but also not the traditional style of Puranakan food. I call it a, like a younger Puranakan cuisine. It's how young people would interpret or, or cook Puranakan food. So essentially Puranakan food is a fusion style of food. What you have is kind of the best of both worlds. You have the Malay style uh, curries and sambals which are absolutely delicious and then you also have the Chinese wok cooking and also you have the soups and you have all the Chinese ingredients like you know Chinese mushroom or the dried bean curd and preserved soybean paste and all this just fused together to have a very unique combination of dishes. Uh, it can only happen here and not really everywhere else. It was really born out of that whole uh, history of Singapore being a trading centre. You have a lot of traders that came down and, and they were kind of stuck here. They settled down with the, uh, the local woman and probably at that point the story goes like I miss my these flavours, can you please cook this? And somehow that feels into the Peranakan culture. So coming from a Peranakan family, food is a very big part of home. You know, when I was young, I tried to help. But I think that didn't turn out very well because Peranakan food is not the easiest or the most uh, quick or fast kind of food or cooking. So you spend a lot of time peeling uh, garlic and cutting lemongrass and then you got to pound with the mortar and pestle. I always say I want to help but after like two minutes, you know, I give up already. It took so much time and effort. I think over the years, um, I start to learn or, or experience a lot more about food. I would say liking cooking is a little bit different from professional cooking and I had to had that first opportunity before I jumped into it and somehow it came by accident through a work and travel program actually that happened in the, in the US. I was desperate for a job and I just found this job uh, in a newly open kind of a bistro and they just needed people but I had like almost no experience and they say yeah it's okay you can you can start here as a prep cook you can cut the lettuce the tomatoes and wash the salad leaves and all that I said that's fine because I just want to be part of the kitchen on the first day that I went to work they were so busy and so short-handed straight away they put me on the line right in the action I don't know what's going on it was tough but I loved it I love the whole pressure of the kitchen, the timings, the teamwork, everything. That first day was kind of the, the first time that I worked or did something and I felt alive. Going into Puranakan food wasn't really part of the plan. To me, Puranakan food at that time was home-cooked and comforting kind of food. Not really restaurant food. But I guess when I was learning and I was training under all this like uh, different cuisine, yeah, I, I could learn their cuisine, but I could never truly represent it or I could never truly cook from my heart. It's small things like that that start to make me question and, and start to get interested back in Puranakan food. The food that I do now, it's really a reflection of myself. Every year has been a year of change. Currently, that is showcased through our new tasting menu. You must know Puranakan food is a very rich food and you still have it with a lot of white rice. It fills you up very, very quickly. And we learned that, you know, we want people who go for this menu to be able to taste without feeling you are being stuffed, that like you don't have to roll out of the restaurant. And this is where we try to deliver a variety of flavours. The ingredients that I use are never repeat, so you can taste uh, ranging from chilli, sambals, or to curries, even different style of curry in one menu. So the day that I received the Michelin star, no feeling. Uh, it took a lot to get that. It's not that I, I'm not happy or proud of it, but I think there are a lot more important things in life that we should pursue. You know, I always say it's not a win just for Peranakan food. I think it's a win for all heritage food. I just hope it can inspire other people to say, hey, Peranakan food has a chance to gain international recognition. We should be proud of it. And I hope this can serve as a uh, really an inspiration 
to stay true to yourself, be sincere about what you do and you'll get there one day. My plans are very simple. I think we just want to stay focused and get better. You know, I'm still young and the restaurant is still very young and I still have a lot to learn because we don't want just to cook good food. We want to deliver a message or a story as well, which they can carry on to, you know, to other people as well.